something and, and decided that uh, he, he needed to leave camp. I think he would have been uh, made to play against racing uh, last weekend anyway. But um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, that uh, we'll see this weekend. Um, but luckily they've got Adam Hastings who's been playing well. But um, like you said, Finn's been a, a great player for Scotland the last couple of years and it'd be sad to, to see him not play this weekend and, and weekends after. How confident are you that Scotland are going to put a performance together? Because they're, they're, their form has been patchy over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, it certainly has. I mean, they've got to put the World Cup behind them uh, against a, an Irish team that's, you know, with a couple of new caps, but um, still the, a backbone of experience. So um, they haven't had the great, greatest record against Ireland lately either. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a tough game for them. Yeah. Um, what, what is the truth about where Scotland are in the revolution at the moment? Because, you know, you even think back to the England game last year and, and the England game, I, I would say, was one of their main reasons heading into the World Cup that we were scared of what Scotland might be able to do to us. That second half performance was sensational, but the first half performance was kind of more accurately where they are at the moment, it seems. Yeah, it's just inconsistent. Um, I think uh, they have got, have got the, they're very dangerous, have got in them the danger, but uh, very consistent. They don't play... Um, yeah, you know, the strategy sometimes is isn't uh, you know safe. <laughs> so obviously, when, if if a team makes mistakes, you're going to get punished. And um, when it clicks, it clicks. But uh, like like I said, it's a bit inconsistent. And um, Adam might might help that uh, at ten. But um, yeah, it's uh, sometimes you don't know which team you're going to get. What sort of 10 is he in your view? I think from the sounds of what you're saying there, he's a bit more of a safe option, a safe pair of hands in there? Uh, just. Uh, yeah, I think um, he's a little bit more, you can guide him a little bit more than, than Finn. Um, you know, Finn is one, a guy, you know, you, you know yourself sees it, plays it, and um, sometimes strategy can, can be, you know, play second fiddle. So um, I think you can guide him a little bit more than, than Finn, uh, which would be... Uh, a little bit more to the liking of of, um, of Gregor, who will be able to put a bit more of a stamp on the game. Andy Farrell yesterday was talking about um, the traditions of the best Irish teams having a very strong pack that releases the the backs to do their job. And you know, like uh, it's kind of it's it's a fairly elementary thing to talk about. But I guess you know when you hear a coach. It's a bit of a challenge, really, to the forwards to make sure that they are a dominant forward pack and that they do bring uh, an abrasiveness and an aggression to every play. It's kind of what you want your coach to say. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, like you said, it's an essential of the game. It's a, it's a base of, of the game. And um, I think as a forward, you, you know that. Uh, um, I think that, uh, that it's, it's, it's your role and, and that's what you need to do. But um, saying that, um, I, th I think Ireland have got that in them. Um, uh, Scotland are going to be abrasive they're going to be up for it but um, I don't think Ireland will struggle with that um, in the past I mean they've gone up, up against the best teams in the world and, and come out on top so um, yeah it's exactly what you want you know it's expected of you and, and, and you want to front up every weekend What's the Scottish forward pack like at the moment how, how good how well do they actually match up against this Ireland team Well I think you know they've got some Great players in there. Johnny Gray, um, Gil, Gil Chris got some abrasive players. Um, front row is always a bit of a battle, um, especially with depth. But um, you know, there are some guys. Barkley's retired, so I'm not quite sure what Gregor's going to put out. Um, but they're going to be stinging from the World Cup, and they'll be uh, motivated for the first game against Ireland. So um, you can you can bet they're going to be uh, they're raring to go, but. Um, obviously, uh, after uh, the end of the World Cup and start a new, not a no new campaign, but who do you go with? Do you go with younger guys that are going to give you a bit more um, spark, uh, or do you go a bit more experience, knowing that you've lost a couple? Uh, that's look. We've we've actually been talking about exactly the same thing, and there's a, a bit of mix and match from uh, from an Ireland perspective in that, like some of the older players have been retained, some of the. Uh, younger players have been given the opportunity to, to get their cap. It's the, it's the coaching dilemma. Uh, look, we can hear the bird song in the background there. It's um, sunny in Montpellier this morning, is it? I'm, I'm actually in Scotland this morning. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a week off the top 14. Um, we have been given holiday, thank goodness, and I've come back to, to Scotland to see some friends and um, 
uh, recharge the batteries for the, the rest of the three years that left in the, in the season for top 14. Right. <laughs> <laughs> how is uh, how is life in Montpellier generally then? Uh, it's good. Uh, you know, our results have been a bit ropey, uh, especially away from home. We've had La Rochelle this weekend and um, started well, had a had a awful uh, middle 40 minutes and then uh, we came through in the end. But with uh, Xavier Gawajosa, um, head coach now, it's, it's teams start to find their feet and the, work out what he expects of them and how he wants to play. So, um, you know, the last... How many games we've got? Last ten games of the season, we're in in amongst the the six. So we just have to make sure we win our home games, as all French teams do, and and target a few away wins. Obviously, we haven't had one yet. Um, you've obviously got a, a, a cult relationship with the Leinster fans as a, a cult hero from your time uh, in Dublin as well. I, I, like, have you been back to Dublin? Are you, are you still in touch with anybody from that Leinster setup? Um, yeah. I... Sometimes speak to Leo. I haven't spoken to Leo for a while, actually. Um, Jamie, I speak to sometimes. Um, I haven't been back to Dublin since... Uh, when was it? I can't remember. But, um, yeah, the guys, when we played Connacht uh, a couple of weeks back, they they thought I played in, They thought I played for Ireland because everyone was stuck, or everyone talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I said just because I played here. And I, I loved my time in, at... Uh, at Leinster in Dublin, um, and it feels like everyone said you just played for two years. And it, and to me as well, it felt like I played at, at uh, Leinster for more than more than two years. But um, it was a great time. Yeah, that uh, that Leinster team turned out has a bunch of players on it who've gone on to become coaches. So it must have been an amazing team to be a part of. When you think back to the rugby IQ that was on the field for every match. Yeah, exactly, um, and we. Some of the coaches talk about it. It wasn't too long ago, actually, about the team. And you look back who played, and it was it was uh, it was a pleasure to play for. And um, and it sort of had a like you said, it had a collective uh, IQ, collective knowledge, and a, a bit of a um, yeah, it was a special rugby intelligence that was in, involved with the with the team that we had there. And and even now, you can see the younger guys that are in that squad playing well and continuing to um, to carry the flag for Leinster. Last question, do you expect um, a close game at the weekend or is this one of those difficult situations that um, if Scotland don't start well, the game could get away from them pretty quickly? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I, I hope it's a close game. Um, we've seen uh, Scotland play, you know, if I, I think if they played like they did against England. Um, they, you know, might come up short. But saying that, if they get their strategy right, I think that they'll be close in there, there or thereabouts. But uh, it's whether they pick the right way to play. Nathan, great stuff. Uh, thanks, William, for uh, joining us this morning. Great to talk to you. Pleasure. It's Nathan Hines there, live from Scotland, uh, obviously coaching as part of the Montpellier coaching ticket at the moment, giving us his thoughts ahead of the game. What do you think is going to happen? I think they're going to win. I think. Easily? I think so. 14 points spread was the last I saw, was it? Was it 14 points spread? If, if it still is uh, 14 points spread, I would, I would have thought that Ireland will sneak past that. Not much more past that, but I think it'll be 17, 16, 17 point win. For, like, I'm, again, I, every opening game Six Nations prediction that I will ever make in my entire life is met with a, a huge degree of caution. But if I'm to bring back 2018 levels of bullishness, Ireland will hammer Scotland this weekend. Yeah, 13 points, I think. So it's closed. What's happened, I wonder? Uh, maybe, sorry, there's probably, you can probably still get a, a bit of 14 if you, if you hunt it. I don't know. I wonder what it was uh, pre Finn Russell. Would it have been a 10, 11 points? No, I don't, think, I don't think it was that big. As, I think I don't. Like, he played in the game in the World Cup. It's interesting that uh, Heinz was saying there that, you know, perhaps Scotland play with a lack of caution sometimes. It didn't look like they played with a lack of caution when Ireland came up against them in the World Cup. Is that not, are they not like stupidly running the ball from, I mean, you know, we obviously want them, uh, let's run the ball from their own 22, so it's obviously not stupid all the time. But they don't exactly kick to touch and then play a pressure game and... 
They don't, they, you know, they have Finn Russell in the team. Yeah. He's like a, and they were unbelievably unimaginative against A Ireland. glorious playmaker. Um, we were pretty lucky in that first half. A bunch of stuff went our way. The ball literally bounced off the uh, post for us so that we scored uh, an early try. We, we killed them early and didn't allow them into the game and then didn't play great in the second half. We, we killed them early and they couldn't recover late. Like, I, I don't think it was a, a great sign of Scotland whatsoever, that, that, that performance that day. I think they were probably better almost uh, against Japan, even though they lost that game as well. They probably showed a bit more fight in that. Uh, I, I just, I, I can remember that. I was astonished with how Scotland, because there was, there was real fear about that um, going into that game against Scotland, given how our year had kind of nosedived the poor return against England. Before. We were right to be, we were right to be cautious, it turned out. It turned out we were right to be cautious, but we still hammered him and we were shite. You can get uh, 14 points or 13 points, depending on where you look. Okay, so I'll obviously be having the 14 and um, yeah, I'm having a bit of that. 8.37 this morning, there's uh, some more of our James McLean interview from Off The Ball last night. Here he is talking to Nathan about Stephen Kenny having no problem commanding the respect of the Irish senior squad when he takes charge. They obviously work together at Derry City. 